On today's video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 most gang infected cities in Florida for 2024. In the past, when I've done videos on this topic, it's been censored and deleted from YouTube. So hopefully we don't have that outcome on today's video since it's just information on the cities that are having the biggest crime problems related to this type of activity. When it comes to gang problems, a lot of people say that the state of California is the worst. And I will disagree. I think Florida has a huge problem on par with any other state. And unfortunately, there are so many gang infected cities in Florida that it's actually not hard to come up with this list. And I could have probably made a list of about 20 or 30 cities. Narrowing it down to the top 10 was actually pretty difficult. Usually when I make a top 10 list, it takes a lot of thinking. But on today's list, it's pretty straightforward. And in fact, there could have been many other cities that would have easily made today's list. The state of Florida is having a huge problem with gang activity and if you watch the news, the news is covered with all types of events that are happening throughout the state of Florida where gangs are behind the violence. Over the last three years, I think activity in Florida has increased and we're seeing a lot of criminal activity in Florida that normally wasn't present here before. So if you're thinking about moving to the state of Florida, these are 10 cities you want to be careful with. Some of the cities that did not make our list but could have easily ended up on today's list are Immokalee, Lakeland, Fort Myers, Homestead, Fort Pierce, Wimalma, Juanetta, and of course Pasco County along US 19. These areas could have easily made our list today but they didn't, which just goes to show how big the problem in Florida is becoming. Let's get on with today's list. Number 10 is Arcadia, Florida, located in southwest Florida in DeSoto County. This is a rural town based mostly off agriculture. With a large Hispanic, black, and white population, just about every group you could think of has a presence in this impoverished city. The diversity of the area combined with the poor incomes that this area has means that people and the youth here have very little opportunities and criminal groups reign king on the streets of Arcadia. Arcadia, Florida is struggling with crime, poverty, ineffective local government, and gangs really are a huge problem if you're living here. The city is also segregated and along those lines break down the different groups that control the city. Driving along the major highways, it might look like another small town in Florida, but get off and explore the city streets and you'll find out that Arcadia is plagued with criminal activity. Number 9 is Bradenton, Florida. Located between Sarasota and Tampa, this area is full of activity. The overdose rate in this county is one of the highest in the state of Florida, and the homeless population is one of the largest. It's no secret that these groups profit off of other people's misery, and in Bradenton, Florida, the misery is abundant. According to local news sources, between Bradenton and Sarasota, white and Mexican groups are strong, claiming territory and marking up many parts of the community. However, there's a somewhat peaceful coexistence in this area and it doesn't always end up being in violence, but the membership numbers are large despite the fact that violence is relatively low. Driving around the city streets of Bradenton, you'll notice that many of the poor communities are clearly marked and designated. And many of the homeless people that I interview have on camera admitted some type of affiliation. But again, the good thing is if you're moving to this part of Florida, it doesn't seem like it's a violent scene. In some of the other cities that we'll see on today's list, the case is not the same. Number 8 is West Palm Beach. This part of Florida is not only known for its violence, it's also known for having a lot of different groups. Undoubtedly one of the most elegant and beautiful cities in Florida, you'll still have to be very careful on the streets of West Palm Beach as it's no secret that this is one of the biggest concentrations of gangs in the entire state of Florida. Whether Hispanic, black, or white, everybody here is willing to fight, so please be careful on the streets of West Palm Beach and don't let those beautiful palm trees and beaches fool you. There's a lot going on in the background of the streets of West Palm Beach. Nearby Riviera, known as the Raw, is one of the most dangerous places in Florida with criminal groups willing to battle it out to see who's the toughest. Definitely one of the most complicated places in Florida when it comes to criminal activity. This area is known to be violent and very reactive, so it makes a lot of sense to stay about your wits. Not disrespect anybody on the streets of West Palm Beach, 
Also pay close attention to what you wear, since a lot of people are just looking for an excuse to do something violent. Number 7 is Pompano Beach, known to the locals as the No. In Broward County, Florida, you're dealing with mostly African American or Caribbean groups. Broward County has a large Haitian population, and as we know the country of Haiti has been dealing with many problems, it's been plagued for decades. The vast majority of Haitian families are good, hardworking people, but many cannot forget the troubles that they had in Haiti, and they struggle to adjust to life in America, ending up joining activities on the streets. On the streets of Florida, Pompano has a fierce reputation, and if you're moving to this part of Broward County, you're definitely going to have to be aware of your surroundings, as the city is infected with gangs. Despite beautiful palm trees and warm weather, much of the youth here ends up involved in delinquency in one form or another. Many of the things that have happened on the streets of Pompano have made national news, so it's no secret that this city is facing a lot of problems when it comes to this type of activity. Number 6 is Tampa, Florida. Now this might be a surprise to people who are not familiar with the Tampa Bay area, but Tampa has a huge gang activity problem. Both broken down by racial lines as well as neighborhoods, the city of Tampa is marked out pretty well. And it's not only a problem for the inner city, many of the suburbs and small towns around the Tampa Bay area are dealing with a huge problem as well, extending all the way from Bradenton to Lakeland to the north side around Dadeville, the entire Tampa Bay area has a huge problem with this type of criminal activity. The city of Tampa is becoming ever segregated, which means that most of these groups stay within their neighborhood boundaries, but when there's large events in the city and people gather from different places, we're starting to see a lot of activity like what happened recently in Ybor City. Tampa is a very diverse metropolitan area, and with that diversity come different types of groups. If you spend enough time in Tampa, you'll figure out that there are gangs everywhere in this city. And with a history of Italians and Cubans stemming all the way from the days of the Italian mobs, criminal activity today in the streets of Tampa is fairly organized, which might explain the relative calmness on the streets of Tampa and the propensity to violence really isn't common here. But just because you can't see these groups or it doesn't always result in violence, that doesn't mean that these groups are not present. In Tampa, economical crimes are a huge type of organized activity, and this is usually going to result in theft rings and other types of crimes that don't usually result directly in the street violence. Number 5 is Orlando, Florida. Known for its tourism, a fun and safe city, if you enter into the wrong neighborhoods, you can definitely find a huge surprise. Orlando, Florida is known to have over 100 criminal organizations, and some neighborhoods in Orlando are downright dangerous. Apart from the typical street gangs, Orlando also has a huge number of hate groups, which means that violence is always present in this part of the state. The area also has a huge Caribbean population that continues to grow. Despite all of its own homegrown problems, over a million Puerto Ricans now reside in the state of Florida, the vast majority of them around the Orlando area. Puerto Rico has one of the highest crime rates of any territory the United States has, and most of the people moving to the Orlando area are young, so we can logically assume that this influx of people from the Caribbean islands, countries that have higher crime rates in the United States, have the propensity to create problems in the United States as well. We recently saw in West Orlando how a news reporter was killed for covering a story about a murder. The person who was arrested ended up being a documented member. Number 4 is Jacksonville, Florida. While the amount of gangs is not as diverse as other parts of the state, in Jacksonville, you have white groups and you have African American street gangs. However, their propensity for violence is the highest in the entire state. So while the entire landscape of Jacksonville isn't covered by gang territories, like many of the other cities on this list, where you do have these groups present, they are extraordinarily violent. Jacksonville has historically held the highest murder rates in Florida for decades now, and entering into the wrong inner city neighborhood here can definitely be dangerous as criminal activity abound and groups protect their neighborhoods from adjacent groups. Jacksonville isn't denoted for the sheer number of groups, it's actually just the propensity to violence that makes this one of the most dangerous cities in Florida. As most of these problems are involving the youth, social media plays a huge role. If you're moving to Jacksonville, Florida, you are best to stay away from the inner city neighborhoods. These places are a constant battleground. 
Number three is Miami Gardens, known to the locals as Murder Gardens. It holds the highest murder rate in Florida for any city its size. The sheer number of gangs that are disputing this area of Miami is insane. Different cliques battle it out to see who's the toughest, and the streets are filled with violence constantly. It might look like an almost suburban part of Miami, but in reality, Miami Gardens is a gang-infested area, and it's wise for you to stay alert here and not play stupid games. The northern end of Dade County and the southern end of Broward are crime-infected areas in different neighborhoods, nationalities, and races. It is a melting pot of criminal activity as well. On the surface, it may not look like a bad area, but the entire city of Miami Gardens has been carved out by criminal groups. Due to the rising cost of real estate in South Florida, North Dade County and South Broward have had an influx of people moving to there just for the affordability. But in that, people from different neighborhoods are mixed in, and now there's many claims to the same area. As people from all over this metropolitan area get pushed into the worst areas because of the increasing real estate prices, areas like Opalaka, Miami Gardens, and adjacent areas have become ever increasingly the only place left for poor people in South Florida to live, which means that you're putting all the poor people into the same neighborhoods. These are the communities that have the least opportunities, and they're the ones that are most likely to end up involved in the wrong activity. And as of recently, the city of Miami is starting to get on par with Jacksonville. Miami is no longer one of the safest large cities in Florida. Crime has increased, and now Miami is going to be competing with Jacksonville for the most dangerous city in Florida, which means that the worst parts of Miami are definitely going to have a lot of criminal activity. Unfortunately, social media seems to glorify this, and the youth here gets involved quite often with the wrong decision making. The list of reasons why Miami Gardens has this problem and why this problem doesn't seem to come to an end seem to be never ending. But Miami Gardens is definitely an area you need to be careful in while you're traveling through Florida. The propensity to violence is always present, so stay alert. Number two is Lake Worth, Florida, located in Palm Beach County, known to many people as Lake Worthless. The city's reputation is so bad that recently the city even went as far as changing the name to try to distance itself from the reputation that it created. But it's worthless. People know that Lake Worthless is worthless. And the amount of gangs in this city is overwhelming. It's a city that's covered with violence, poverty, and of course, more gangs than you could think are possible for a place like Florida. The state of Florida has a lot of problems, but when it comes to being among the worst, there's no doubt that Lake Worth has a serious problem. Just about all of the biggest and scariest gangs in Florida have some type of presence on the streets of Lake Worth. And as we say in Florida, there's another world on the other side of that bridge. And when it comes to Lake Worth, it is very true. On one side, you have some of the most opulent communities in the state. But when you get into the inner city streets of Lake Worth, there's nothing but crime and all types of criminal activity. Number one is Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And really, we could say that for the most part, Broward County as a whole is the most gang-infected region of the entire state of Florida. And don't get me wrong, Fort Lauderdale is a great city with beautiful beaches, great economy, lots of diversity. But among all that comes another aspect, which is criminal activity. Unfortunately, Fort Lauderdale, Lauder Hill, and many of the adjacent communities are definitely some of the most gang-ridden parts of Florida. And that finalizes today's video on the top 10 most gang-infected cities in Florida. I did the best I could to avoid mentioning specific groups and just told you guys the nationality or the race that's behind it, since at the end of the day, that's not really what matters on today's video. The purpose of today's video is helping people who are moving to Florida understand that these cities are probably not the best places for you if you have a family or if you got some bad kids that are likely to take to delinquency. And there was a lot of ways that I could have ranked this list by violence, by membership, by propensity, or by the notoriety of recent news articles. The point is that if your city ended up on today's list, chances are you have a huge problem that needs to be addressed in that community. And those who are not aware that this is a huge problem in the state of Florida, 
you're pretty much living underneath a rock. It is definitely a problem that is plaguing the streets of Florida. If you watch my videos on a regular basis, anytime that I see graffiti, I'll always point it out. After all, that's a public manifestation of the people who put it up, letting everybody wanting to know that they're present in these communities. But for the sake of today's video, I didn't really show too much graffiti since after all, we don't want to give anybody favoritism. We just want you to know that this is a present problem on the streets of Florida and in these communities, it's where it's most noteworthy, most relevant, and most visibly appreciated. And I hope my video doesn't get taken down because last time I did a video like this, it wasn't on the internet for too long. It was a video related to Oklahoma. What I don't understand is how people are able to make music videos promoting that type of lifestyle. And if I make a video talking about it, I'm the one that gets flagged. It really makes no sense how the censorship works. All right, guys, that is today's video. And as we know, that's a lifestyle that leads you in two directions, either prison or the grave, two of the most miserable places you could ever be. So definitely not a direction you should ever want to take your life in. But unfortunately, a lot of people on the streets are attracted to it. They think it's something they want to be a part of. And really, all it does is destroy their lives. And once they got you, they don't let you go. So it's not a lifestyle or decision you can always walk away from without consequences. 